Have you ever been working in Character Creator and you just can't get quite the right look with the current morphs that you have? And you want to make a custom morph for your character? It's really not that hard as long as you know Blender, so let me show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to Currently Used, and the default character that loads in actually has two morphs applied to it by default. You want to get rid of them. So you can either you know, select here and, and type in zero, or you can double click and it toggles between states. So double click to zero out. So these two are gone. So now if we click off and go back to currently used, we'll see that these are empty. There are no currently used morphs. If you plan on applying this morph to multiple characters, or you later want to sell your morph on the Realusion Marketplace, then it is advisable for you to start in this state without any morphs currently applied. The reason being is any morphs that are applied, uh, especially if they're like somebody else's custom morph, will be required by your customer to download and purchase those morphs as well. This character here with no morph supplied is what Character Creator considers the default morph. With that said, if you did have a custom character loaded and you needed to morph it in an exacting, specific way, you can also use this workflow to do that. But for now, I'll show you the generic way using this character. We need to export this character in a very specific way for it to work. We do that by going to File, Export, OBJ, Nude Character and Bind Pose. It's very important that you pick this one and not the character with the current pose. When you are importing the character or the morph back into Character Creator, it's always comparing it to a character in the bind pose. So if you had your character in a different pose when you applied the morphs, that pose is going to be embedded in the morph, which will do really strange things to your poses and animations later on down the line. So it is imperative that you choose this one. You have a choice of full body, body, eye, and teeth. So just the eyes or just the teeth, that's self-explanatory. The difference between full body and body, full body is going to export the whole character with eyes and teeth. Body is only going to export the body itself without eyes and teeth. I usually do full body because uh, if I'm modifying the character in a way that's moving the position of the eyes or the size of the eyeballs, then it's always good to have the eyeballs, you know, move and resize along with the character. So doing the full body ensures that that happens. You want to give the character an easy to understand name so you don't get confused later on down the road. Now we can go to Blender to import the default character. In Blender, press delete to destroy the default cube. Then go to File, Import, OBJ. Navigate to where you've saved the default character, but before importing it, there are some important settings we have to check first. I've created a preset with the correct settings. This is what the settings should look like. Absolutely make sure that Keep Vertex Order is selected with Polygroups checked. It is imperative that you do this. Otherwise, when you import the character back into Character Creator, the character may look scrambled or it won't import at all. So this is very important because if you don't do this, all your hard work with creating a morph will go to waste. If you want to save these settings, after you select them, click the plus here and give it a name. Now from now on, you'll be able to select this preset. Now that we have our settings, we'll load in the object. When the character loads, you'll see that it is quite large. This is fine. Do not change the scaling. It's okay. Um, it's only because OBJs don't have a unit of measure embedded in it. And Character Creator exports as centimeters, but Blender assumes it's meters, so it becomes very tall. But it's going to be the same going back the other way, so don't change the scaling. This is fine. Now that we're in Blender, you can do traditional editing if you'd like, 
but most of the time for characters, I'll use the sculpting environment. To go to the sculpting environment, you have to select the character first. Now it looks like when you first imported it, the, the character is selected, but Blender's weird and this is a dark orange outline, which means it's not quite really selected. I don't understand why. You'll have to click it again with this lighter orange outline and that means it's truly selected. You need to do that before going to the sculpting environment. So press sculpting up here and you'll be sent to the sculpting environment. Again, we have to zoom way out and zoom back in. And we have all our great tools over here for sculpting. This is a lot of fun to do and you don't really need a pen tablet to do it, although it would be easier. Most of the time, I'll just use my mouse. One of my favorite tools to use is the Elastic Deform tool. So if we select that, we can make a modification to our character if we'd like. Before we start modifying it though, most of the time you'll want to click on this X up here. This is Mesh Symmetry. If we click on Symmetry for the X axis, it means anything we do to one side of the character will be mirrored on the other side, like this. So let's just create a simple morph. Now, most fantasy characters, you know, like elf ears and things like that. So let's do something along those lines, but you know, they always kind of go straight up from the tip and that's kind of boring. So let's make it kind of like a triangular ear that stretches back like this. As you can see, this tool is very quick, powerful, and easy to use for morphing your character. So now that we've created this great morph, let's bring it back into Character Creator. So now we have to export it back out of Blender. To do that, with the character selected, go to File, Export, OBJ, navigate to where you want to save it. And just like before, there are presets we want to use. These are the presets I normally use. You can choose selection only if you want to be sure that you're only bringing your character in. But if you only have lights and cameras in your scene along with your character, then it's not necessary. Great, we're done with Blender, so let's go back into Character Creator. Before we create our morph slider, let's decide where we want to put it. Since this is specifically just a morph for the ears, we want to go to head, ear, and you see there's general and detail. General is very general shapes. Detail has things like elf ears and stuff like that. So I think we're going to put it under actor, head, ear, detail. So now that we know where we want to place it, let's create the slider. Go to create. Morph Slider Editor. First, we'll give our morph a name. We'll choose something that follows the same naming convention as the other morphs. So ear, triangle. Now we choose a broad category. This could be head, body, eyes, teeth, eyelashes, and nails. These are simply the broad categories of the morph hierarchy. So since this is under the head, section that we want to do the head. Please note though that this doesn't restrict morphs that you've just done to the head. So if we also did a morph to the body, choosing this category doesn't mean that the body portion of the morph won't show because it actually will. So keep that in mind. Now we see that our slider path is actor head. So right now it would go under here, but we want to also go to ear detail. So we need to type that in manually. Ear forward slash detail. Now our slider will be created here along with all our other ear morphs. Now we need to choose a source and default morph. 
Don't let the name morph scare you. It simply means mesh or mesh shape or character. Um, and that's because the morphs are created by comparing one character or mesh with another one and seeing how the points in the mesh changed between the two. Source and target simply means from and to. So we'll be creating a morph from this default character to the character we morphed in Blender. So for source morph, we're gonna select default morph, which is this non-gendered character. One thing to note here, if you based your morph off of a custom character that already had morph supplied, then before starting the process, you'll wanna load in that character. And then when you're creating the slider, you'll wanna choose current morph instead of default morph. For target morph, we'll select file and then choose the file we saved from Blender. Now we have this weird thing called checksum file path. When we first exported our character from Character Creator, it also created this file called obj key. The purpose of this file is to keep the digital rights management for the character intact. Had we based our morph off of somebody else's morph, then this ensures that if we go to sell our morph, the end customer will also have to buy the morph that was the base for our morph. That way, all the artists involved will get credit for the sale. Now we have adjust bones to fit morph. 99% of the time, you're gonna to wanna to have this checked. This ensures that if we did something like stretched out the arms or really changed the shape of the face, the skeleton associated with the character will move into the correct position in order to follow our new morph. We can click this in order to see the results of our morph instantly applied to the character after it's loaded in. And there we go, just like that, our character now has our triangular ears. And now you'll notice under ear detail, we have our new ear triangular slider that we can apply to any character. If you didn't quite like the look of the morph, you can go back in Blender, make your changes, save the new file, then go over here and click on this pencil, which will allow you to edit the morph slider. You can use default morph again, and then just select your new file here, your, the standard OBJ key again, of course, and click on replace, and it'll fix the morph. If you don't like the morph at all, you can go here, and select delete slider and it'll get rid of it. Now what if we use the sculpting tools inside of Blender to modify the default morph into our own character with both a head and a body that are different and we wanted separate sliders for the head and the body. You'll see that done often with characters where if you select the full body you'll have a slider that just affects the body but not the head and if you select full head, then you can modify the head and not the body. So I'll show you how we can do that. Let's go back into Blender and modify our character some more. Now back in Blender, you notice that my sculpting tools have disappeared. This seems to happen sometimes when you export from the sculpting environment. Just click on something like layout and then back to sculpting again and you'll get them back. Now let's modify the body of our character in some weird way just so we have uh, some point of comparison. Okay, now we have a character with changes to both the body and the head. So let's save this new character out. I'm going to name this Morph Weirdo, and I'm going to make sure that I choose my standard presets making sure that keep vertex order is checked, and then export the OBJ. Now, just like before, we're gonna load the morph into Character Creator in the same way, Morph Slider Editor. We'll call the morph Weirdo Full Character. We'll choose Body for the main category, and we'll type in Full Character here to put this in the Full Character subdirectory. If you don't have one, 
Character Creator will create it. As before, we choose Current Morph, and we navigate to our file, and then load up our OBJ key. Just like before, we definitely want to adjust bones to fit the morph because we stretched out our limbs. And we can auto apply to the current character. Okay, great. It looks like our morph has worked and we can dial it back and forth. Unfortunately, you'll notice that the slider is affecting both the head and the body at the same time. So how do we separate those out? We do that by making sure the morph is applied. Then we go to create head and body morph sliders. Now we can create a, just a head slider, a body slider, or a head and body slider. We give our morph a name. We're going to call this weirdo. And that will create a slider both under actor head and actor body. We can also, like before, do subdirectories if we want. Press OK, and now our character looks the same. But you'll notice if we click on Currently Used, we have a weirdo body and a weirdo head. And if we change, say, the body, it only affects the body. And if we change the head, it only affects the head. We can find these morphs under Actor Body. And actor head. But I find it easier to click on actor and then use the search function. You'll notice that we still have our full character slider so that we can use uh, either these separate ones or our full character morph all at once. And that's it for this tutorial. The only other thing I want to mention is that when you are in Blender and you're modifying your character, do not do anything that changes the actual structure of the mesh. You can do anything that moves around the vertices, but you do not want to change the number of vertices. So no subdivision, or no voxelation, or decimation, or anything like that. All you can do is do simple editing of moving around where the vertices are. If you were to do something like entering edit mode, and then selecting the hand, deleting vertices, then this character would no longer import back into Character Creator because the number of vertices is different. So please keep that in mind. So that's it for this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers. Hi. Um, if you liked this video, then maybe you could support the channel on Patreon. That would be really cool. That's it. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.